You're on. Peace. Second part. Ippy, the Hebrew water boy. Io Delhi. Why are you referring us to a website that is called that is calling Ippy a Hebrew water boy servant? As a matter of fact, let's continue on this website. Let me see this because this is this is evidence here. But he's going to say, well, he, this is a part of his digression. This is information that he's giving me to show evidence of Hebrew servants. What better evidence is there than the actual images of Hebrews? So here's his image. Ippi, the Hebrew water boy. Now look at this. Now they're going to show you a close-up image of Ippi. Here he is with his, with his dog. I'm going to scroll back up. Remember, scribes and high officials had dogs. The regular man in Kemet did not have a dog, especially a slave. How is a slave having a dog? And this is not a guard dog. This is a baby, a baby greyhound. These are baby dogs that he's raising up. Slaves and servants don't have pet dogs. Okay, anyway, this is Ippy. It's not a slave or servant. If you can find me, I'm going to get on camera. You find me Ippy as a Hebrew, and I, Io, will give you, and I'm putting this on YouTube, $10,000 tonight. You will get $10,000 wired to you if you can show me any archaeological find that says that Ippi was not the scribe of Uncle Aten. Ippi was actually a biblical Hebrew uh, water boy. This is disgusting. Okay, let's go down now. Now let's look what they say about Ippi. We go down now. Now look at, the, look at these lies. Look at this disgusting. This is getting disgusting now. By the way, this is black people's website. Look what they're writing about their ancestors. Close-up of Hebrew water boy. Look at this. As slaves of the Egyptians, child labor, child labor was, was common amongst the Israelites. The boy shown above is about 15 years old. Unlike the Egyptian boys, this Hebrew will eventually grow a full beard. What type of goddamn lies mm. are you Hebrews promoting? How sick are you? How are you ill? Are you mentally disturbed? Mm. How are, how did you go and refer us to a website with in your essay you referring us to a website this website here that has your image with the same Exodus 114 showing. And then when we go to the website as a reference, I find who I know and the whole world knows and every museum knows and every archaeologist and every anthropologist knows Ippi, the scribe of Ankhen Aten, never was a Hebrew water boy slave who was under child labor. <clears throat> this is, you know, this is... Uh, these are black people I'm debating, by the way. I'm debating black people. These are, these are black people that are putting these things up about our ancient Kemetic ancestors taking Ippi and making him a Hebrew water boy. Ote. Now, and once again, I'll show the website. This is the reference website that he gave for us to go and look at the pictures, Hebrew Israel, Israelite images dot HTML. Uh, um, sarahb3tripod.com this is on Ayo Deli's essay that he gave me this is what he gave me Anyways, this is what he gave me as a reference so I can see that Ippi is a Hebrew water boy okay <clears throat> now to the actual Ipiru Papyrus, and once again, Ayo Delhi, please show me Ippi calling himself a Hebrew, a Hebrew water boy um, under child labor, and not the scribe of Ankhenaten, and you'll get ten thousand dollars tonight. Um, it was it was difficult for the gentleman to have a live discussion with me um, tonight due to the fact that we all have jobs. The gentleman had a, has a job to work, so he has to get a certain amount of hours of sleep. Well, I'm not sure how long it would take you at that job to make $10,000, but um, you could basically quit that job tomorrow, and all you have to do is go online and find me archaeology of Ippi calling himself a Hebrew water boy, not the scribe of Ankhenaten, and I will, and I'm saying this live, you will get wired $10,000, and you don't have to work for the next few months. If not, well, anyways, it's up to you. Quit your job or make 10000 in one night, whatever. Okay, now... Let's get to the Ifru Papyrus. 
So, the Ipru Papyrus, according to Wikipedia, right here. Here is the actual Ipru Papyrus. Unlike the biblical book of Exodus, which people came afterwards and said that this Ipru Papyrus is discussing what happened in Exodus, somebody show me the Exodus Papyrus and I'll throw you another ten. No, no, you get two grand for that. You get two grand for that. If you show me an, a, a biblical papyrus, a papyrus written by Hebrews discussing their exodus that dates back to the time of Moses. This is actual Ipru papyrus behind glass in museums. Okay? Now, in the Wikipedia reference that he gave, this is a poem, not a historical event, 1850 to 1600 BCE. When I need I, I need a date of when the Hebrews were in um, when Egypt and when Moses was born, because every time I go to the Bible to give a reference, the gentleman Io says he's not religious. He's not religious. Okay, well, what writings did the Hebrews write in ancient times that we can find in a museum today that discuss themselves in um, in Egypt? Anyways, so Moses, according to all scholars, is born 1400 to 1450 B.C. This, this event is 1850 to 1600 B.C. And it's not even an event, it's a poem. The website you gave, Wikipedia, said it's a poem. Poems are not history. History is not written in poems. Okay, now, we're going to go down here to the genealogy of Moses and you can find this on Maseroth.com Moses according to Hebrews and Jews is 1400 BC okay anyways anyways up and above that let's actually deal with what it says in the Ipru Papyrus the Ipru Papyrus let's actually deal with what it says in here we're going to deal with the dialogue of Ipru and the Lord of All is an ancient Egyptian poem written on papyrus. Here's his Wikipedia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is the evidence that he's giving that the Israelite Exodus, the stuff that happened in the book of Exodus 11, is verified by the Egyptians. Now, here I have the Ipru papyrus, and you can look this up online. It's very, very accessible and ready. It, it says here, we do not know what will happen throughout the land. Indeed, the women are barren and none conceive. That's what the Ipru Papyrus says. Hold on. The Ipru Papyrus says that the women are barren and none conceive. Conceive is to have a child. Exodus 11.5 says, All the firstborn were killed. Women were having babies. Ipru Papyrus, according to the Ipru Papyrus, <clears throat> all the women were buried and none could conceive. According to the book of Exodus 11.5, all the firstborn were killed. Women were having children. Do these sound like the same events? Maybe to some. To me, this sounds like the opposite. If you can't conceive, then how are all your firstborn being killed? Mm. So, these don't seem to match right here. We're going to keep going down in the Ipru Papyrus. Let me see this. Here we go. Ipru Papyrus. Barbarians from abroad have come to Egypt. Men arrive, and indeed there are no Egyptians anywhere. I'll read that again. Actually, we're going to continue this on the next part. Peace for now because we got nine minutes. Look up the next part. Peace.